Let's talk about quiet luxury. What does it mean? What does it mean overall? What does it mean in regards to trends? What does it mean in regards to some of the fashion houses that we all love? And just my overall thoughts on what I think about quiet luxury. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. We love luxury. We love handbags. We love anything accessories. I release two videos a week and I love doing chit chat videos when it relates to bags. I love doing comparisons, hauls, reviews, and anything like that. If you guys love content such as handbags, such as um, things that just make our hearts sing, then please consider subscribing. If you're not following me on Instagram, stop by and say hello. I just love sharing things that I personally love and I would love to chat with you guys if you guys have any questions in regards to videos you see or just overall questions, you can always DM me. Okay, so I've been seeing quiet luxury videos pop up on YouTube so many times recently and not to say, you know, it just, I, I really been thinking about what that means. And I think it means differently for everyone. For me, quiet luxury is just being a little understated, being a little subtle about bags that you're using or things you're wearing. Um, and I believe that every fashion house has its own understated bags that are a little bit more quiet, I guess you could say. I'm gonna go list through some of the bags I think are considered quiet luxury or quieter luxury. And then I'm gonna share like my overall thoughts and just like how I feel about it overall. So I have about eight bags I wanna go over today. Let's start off the first one, which is the Hermes Picatin bag. Now they have this in, I think the 22 and other bigger sizes. I don't know if 22 is the smallest. I'm not as familiar, but recently I've been loving this bag and I just want to add it to my wish list down the line. Um, I think the reason why I love it is because it's understated, but yet we all know Hermes quality is really nice. And then just this color right here is just so good. You guys know I'm on this like green, phase right now but I think green will stay because to me green is like the neutral color when you're looking at like brighter I guess colors and I feel like green is kind of like that neutral tone um, but I love this one you guys know this is like my favorite type of green it's not super bright not super dark but just right so it sits right in the middle so you could use this from different seasons you can use it all around and Hermes there are certain bags everyone knows, right? The Kellys, the Birkins. I mean, most people know a Birkin when they see it, or at least they think they see it, but it's hard with the Picatin. I think if you follow Hermes or you follow handbags or you guys watch YouTube channels, yes, of course, like we all know what the Picatin is, but I think overall, generally, not a lot of people know. So I feel like this is like a very quiet bag. Um, there's really no branding. I think there might be a little bit at the opening or on the lock, but other than that, you really, no one's gonna like stare at your bag. So therefore I think it's just like a really good choice if you are looking for that quality, for that luxurious item, like consider the Picatin. I think the Picatin in the Hermes family is one of their cheaper, I don't wanna say cheaper bags, right? And I think I grew my love for Hermes recently. I've always loved the Kelly, but I never really had the urge to want to necessarily get it now. It was always like, I'll get it later, like down the line. Um, but it was never really like on like a realistic wish list for me. Um, but you guys know I shared the Hermes Evelyn recently. And I think since I was able to look at, inspect the bag, look at the bag, feel the bag. I just kind of grew a love. The Hermes leather is just so luxurious to me. And you guys know that bag was a vintage piece. And even throughout all these years, that vintage piece to me looked almost brand new. So I think it just kind of shows that Hermes really can stand the test of time. Therefore, it's a great piece to get. If you're looking for something more understated, I would really consider the Picatin. I just, to me, like it's something that I would really Number want. two is Bottega. I feel like Bottega, like again, like if you are a bag lover or bag obsessed like me, of course we all know what the Bottega is. But if you don't follow necessarily fashion houses or handbags, people might not know what the Bottega is. Because if you look at it, they're so... There's actually no branding. I think there's brandy inside the bag, but other than that, Bottega is known for its iconic leather. It's known for the iconic weave, right? And the cassettes, like things like that. 
and none of that really has any branding. It is not something like a Louis Vuitton um, where you see monogram everywhere. So therefore, I really do think that the Bottega is a really understated brand overall. In fact, like I think the vintage pieces are even more understated. I think now people are starting to recognize the knot, the new Bottega designs with the big knot, just because it's in magazines, it's, um, you know, it's, it's in more places now. But the old vintage Bottega with um, the shoulder back styles and all of that, it's actually really hard to tell that that's a Bottega unless you know. Therefore, I think it's the perfect quiet luxury. Number three on my list is the Celine Ava bag. Now, Celine, I think overall, it's always been very understated to some degree, but I think recently it's definitely been a little bit louder, as in like the tring off with the tring off logo. Um, the hardware just really pops a little bit, like it's a very subtle bag, but the tree off is the iconic Celine. So when you see it, you know, that's a Celine for the most part. Um, but I think the Ava bag doesn't really have that. Therefore, to me, it makes it pretty subtle, especially like the leather versions they have in the cognac color, a black color. Um, and it's just like a little shoulder baguette basically. But again, like I think there's just on the top in gold, there's like a very small like Celine, but you can always wear it reversed and people won't see it. But you're not going to know it's a Celine bag necessarily. Um, again, unless you know, right? But to me, it's like a very subtle, like, it's a very subtle look and a very subtle bag. So people usually purchase it if they're Celine lovers, they love the quality of Celine, they just love the brand in general, but they're not trying to be showy about it. They're not trying to like have it in your face, something like that, then go for the Ava bag. I definitely think that that is a good alternative if you didn't want to get like the monogram or the triumph. So this is Prada and we all recognize Prada nylon as certain bags. And obviously there are the bags that are a little bit more out there, but then there are other bags that are a little bit more understated. Um, and I'll give some examples here, but you can see like, again, you can flip it around so the Prada logo doesn't really show. Prada is not so much about the monogram, but it's more about the iconic logo, right? The Prada logo. So I definitely think there's bags that if you want to not have that so showy, there are things you can do. And I think a lot of, again, Prada vintage bags, you can't really tell. I'll show you a quick example. This is a Prada bag, but you probably won't know unless you look at the details of it. Um, and for that reason, I really like this bag because it is a great everyday. But let me show you up close. You will see that here it says Prada. And then when you turn it around, it has this Prada logo. And this is what I was talking about, right? Like sometimes these are placed in the back or they're just placed on the side. So it's not that obvious, but if you wanted to wear the bag like this, you could have the logo stick out. If you want to be more subtle, you can wear it like this too, which is really nice. Um, just FYI, this bag is not mine. This bag is from our last drop um, on Bag Crush. So it's one of the bags that is still up for grabs if anyone is interested. But I thought this would be a good example because it's definitely like a quiet bag. You, don't know unless you look it up close, but that's the reason why we source this is because of the small details is what really makes it. And the size is amazing. It just fits so much, great for every day. So again, no like branding on the leather or anything like that. So yeah, again, Prada, I think obviously there are bags that are a little bit more Prada-y, I guess you could say, but then there are other bags that are just a little bit more low key. It's a good op option if you are looking for a luxury bag. Next one is what I would call more of the contemporary side. And I'm just going to lump everything together. It's the Polin, it's the Senrev, it's the Sangmont. Like all those bags to me are kind of in the same category. And I honestly like all the brands mentioned, but you guys know Polin is like one of my favorites when it comes to contemporary brands. Um, I do have Senrev bags too. I also think they're made really well, but Again, like Polin will be my favorite. And then Sama is a brand that I've been looking into. I actually don't own any bags from them. What I've seen on reviews and things like that, it seems like they have really good quality for a really good price point and everything is very subtle. What we mean by quite luxury is something that's not logo heavy, something that's not monogram, still uses good quality, but still embraces 
that subtleness and that sophisticated look. And I feel like all these brands kind of encompass that. Sixth item is Fendi. Now, again, like Fendi has its moments, right? Like I have the Fendi baguette in all of its monogram glory or FF glory, I should say, in the Zuka print. Um, and I love it. I still love it. But if you wanted something a little bit more understated, you could look into bags like the Fendigraphy. The Fendigraphy I know has the Fendi on the bottom. I do have the nano version and the bigger size version. However, if you didn't want it to flip this way, you can definitely still wear it. When it sits here, it sits below. You're not going to see it unless you're trying to show someone. So to me, like that's pretty subtle and I like it for that reason because it's like a little peekaboo if you want to show it, but you don't have to. And then speaking of peekaboo, it's the Fendi peekaboo too. Like Fendi peekaboo is so iconic. Again, like if you know, you know, but some people don't know, right? Because again, the branding is very minimal. I think it only says Fendi on the gold hardware on the top. But other than that, there's really no mention of Fendi, but you know, the qualities there. I think the inside does have monogram print, but who's going to be looking in if you don't want to show anyone. So I think again, like if you're looking for a Fendi, Fendi bag, you don't want to go like the Zuka route or anything that is super monogrammy, I would consider one of these. I think these are pretty good, quiet luxury bag. Next on the list is Ferragamo. Now Ferragamo is a brand that has had its peak at one moment and then it kind of just became quiet as in like you don't see it a lot on the internet. You don't really hear about it. Like some people love it, but it's not like to me like a trendy fashion house. But I know I've, I've started to realize in 2023, Ferragamo is having another moment. And I think they have actually a lot of good quality bags. I went to a Ferragamo store recently and didn't even realize that they actually have some really nice new designs for the season. Um, one of the bags I saw, I don't know, I think it's just called the leather top handle. I'm not quite sure the name. It's this one right here. I also saw this on Mel Sedaris, um, video, but she has showcased this bag. I, I definitely think it is very quiet luxury. Like you don't even know what it is. Um, I know it has like the classic Ferragamo um, hardware, the like logo class. But other than that, like you really don't know. So I think, but Ferragamo leather is just so nice. So if you're looking for something and something that is still like of good quality, definitely look into the Ferragamo. I do think it's a good one. And also I know Ferragamo pricing for a fashion house is actually really nice too. So again, like if you're looking for a bag that is a little bit more understated, but still holds that quality, check out Fair Glass on the list is the Sandro bags. Now I just discovered this bag recently because I don't know about you, but every now and then I'll be obsessed with the bag. Um, right now my obsession is on the Dior book tote. I just love the Twadadri print. I think there's something so so pretty I don't know about it and I I am debating between the small and the medium size I feel like the small is better I'll get more use out of it but I feel like the medium is good if you want to bring your laptop right so I don't know I don't even know if I'm gonna get it because I think the pricing for that is too high and I also think that or I've seen, I should say, on YouTube that there's just a lot of quality issues with that and that always scares me. So I don't know if I'm going to be adding the Dior book tote that's in my future. However, like I still think it's a beautiful bag. But as I was researching the bag, I came across the Sandro tote, which is this one. And people are saying like, this is the perfect alternative for the Dior tote bag. Um, they have it in tweed. They have it in leather. They have like multiple denim. I'll drop some here. So cute, like I haven't actually seen it in person, but the price point on these are a lot less. I think it's probably give and take 500 and below USD, which is really good versus like Dior is like 3000 plus. Um, so if you guys are looking for a good, good tote bag in general, with that Dior book tote feel, look into the Sandro bag. I know I definitely will. Um, I think they have some great options and also very quiet, right? Cause when you wear the Dior book tote, doesn't matter how far of a distance you are. People know what that is and they see it because it's like, bam, in your face, which honestly I like. But at the same time, it's like there are moments you don't want to have that. And I think the Sandro would be a good version, a good alternative to have instead. Okay, what is my overall thoughts on this? My Here it is like quiet luxury. 
is good because sometimes we just don't want to be so out there. I think there's moments for everything, right? There are days where I want to have monogram and there are days where I want to be a little, you know, in your face. <laughs> and there are other days where I'm like, oh, I don't want to wear too much. I just want to be very like low key. I just want like a really basic bag. I'm going to grab this. So I think variety is key, right? Like I love my Fendi Zuka bag, but I don't wear it every single day because again, like sometimes the monogram can be a little too much. Therefore, a lot of times I reach for my more subtle bags with no branding on it. That's just plain leather, you know, like whatever that may be, whatever that looks like, it just depends. I, I'll use my Palin bag or whatever it is. So I do think that there's a moment for everything. I don't think that monogram is over. I don't think that loud bags are done. I definitely like those bags. And I think Louis Vuitton doesn't have really any quiet bags. All their bags are pretty Louis Vuitton branded. Um, but honestly, I kind of like that, right? Just like I like the Zuka print. So I think for me is having a variety and there are certain days I want to use this bag, certain days I want to use that bag. Um, if you're looking for everyday bag, then are you someone that will reach for something that is more monogram or low key? And it really just depends on preference. I mean, for me, I think finding the middle ground will be the best. I'm looking for like an everyday bag and you're not switching bags all the time. Um, but yeah, there is a day and place for everything and everyone's mood is different, right? When I feel like this one way, I want to wear this. So it's by mood, it's by day, it's by time, honestly. So I definitely think quiet luxury makes sense. And I think there's definitely days and places you don't want to wear your nicest bags out there just because you don't want to have that with you at the moment. But there are days that you do. So it's really a balance to me. And that's how I feel when we're talking quiet luxury overall. And yeah, that's just my thoughts. And I just love chatting with you guys and sharing some of <laughs> the some of my overall opinions. But again, just all of this is just my opinion. But love to hear what you guys think about quiet luxury. Drop a comment below or DM me. But other than that, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll see you in my next one. Bye.